Hello and welcome to Weathersnap. I'm Claire Nazaire and welcome back, Alex Deacon. Oh, thanks very much, Claire. It is fantastic to be back. Um, what have we got coming up? Well, we've got the lowdown on high pollen across the UK right now. The latest state of the global climate report is out. And also the lurid meteor shower. When is the best time to see the shooting stars? And we'll tap into your expertise on that, Alex, a little later. <laughs> First of all, let's give you the latest on the Asian heat wave. It's hit the news yet again. Earlier this week, it was all about sandstorms across China, the yellow dust, which was impacting millions of people, particularly in terms of health, but obviously poor visibility. And a severe heat wave has swept across much of Asia as well, causing a lot of impacts, school closures, number of deaths and record breaking temperatures. Some have described this April as the worst April heat wave in Asian history. And in fact, the, the swathe of heat has been remarkable. Yeah, record temperatures for April in China have been recorded in, in lots and lots of different locations, including Chengdu, Zhejiang, Nanjing and Hangzhou and other areas along the Yangtze River Delta region. The hot air has also been right across Southeast Asia in parts of uh, Laos, which recorded 42.7 degrees Celsius this week and possibly the hottest day ever for the capital on Saturday. That's still to be confirmed. Tak in Thailand, in the northwest of the country, hit just north of 45 degrees on Saturday, similar to the previous high of 44.6 Celsius reached in April 2016. And in Bangladesh, temperatures soared above 40 Celsius in Dhaka on Saturday, the hottest day in 58 years, causing road surfaces to melt. There are the numbers for April, so lots of records being broken. According to the UK Guardian newspaper, an official from the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change said that if the heat, heat did not abate, they would have to declare a temperature emergency in certain areas. The heat wave has severely impacted some Indian states, with the Meteorological Department this week issuing an orange warning for severe heat across parts of West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, as well as parts of Bihar. So a lot of states there where there is a high proportion of, sort of labourers and rural workers having to work outside in this heat. And it's not just the heat, Alex, it, the humidity has really soared as well. So why is this? Well, we can put it down to a, a number of reasons, but in particular, it's because the air has been drawn northwards, this tropical air surging northwards across this huge area of the continent. And it's not just uh, about the heat and the temperatures as well. Much of this part of the world, the worst affected areas have been drier than normal as well. And of course, drier soil helps with the heating and that's part of the dust storms also. So it's kind of a combination of a number of factors, not just the heat, but the lack of rainfall too. So we do get intense heat at this time of year. Every year, the temperature soars across much of India and Pakistan before the monsoons kick in around the early part of June. But there has been a real trend for the temperatures just to be too high, the air to be too hot, which has caused so many impacts across a, a really a large area. Um, and, you know, we'll keep you posted on this situation. It's it's really tricky here. The forecast is suggesting that this heat wave may come to an end over the next few days with temperatures dropping back to normal still very warm but even so not that sort of intense oppressive heat which has caused so many problems so that's this year's heat but of course this time last year we were reporting on intense heat in a similar part of the world across india and pakistan data from those events much of it produced actually by the met office has now been analyzed and it's included in a report released today by the wmo the world meteorological organization and the report looks at a range of climate indicators, as Omar Bador, head of climate modelling and policy at the WMO, explains. CO2 is still increasing. The dramatic thing I noticed this year with respect to the greenhouse gas is a very high level of methane increase. This is a, a very dramatic thing that we have noticed uh, in 2022. We are still trying to explain why. For the moment, we cannot see whether it's related to any uh, reason, but uh, we are working on that. 
On sea ice, we have a little good news on the Arctic sea ice. We didn't yet see a major drop compared to the record low in 2012. Uh, however, the long-term trend is still down. On the other hand, the Antarctic is showing some concerns. We record a record low sea ice extent in the Antarctic. Current uh, explanation is mainly due to the atmospheric circulation winds, uh, which uh, were very strong in the Southern Ocean. So we cannot yet attribute that to any long-term trend. In terms of the ocean warming, it's still warming up 700 meters down. So we also record the record high heat in the ocean. While current extreme weather events have yet to play out, the WMO report highlights the devastating cost of last year's events, and not just on people, but also financially. 2022 was amongst the busiest year in terms of the occurrence of extreme events. WMO member states have reported about 500 extreme weather and climate events worldwide including, for instance, Tropical Cyclone Ian with the United States and Cuba, uh, with a total of more than 100 billion US dollar damages and dozens of casualties. The long-term drought in East Africa continues. It has been recorded as the worst drought in 40 years with a humanitarian impact on people, displacement, of course, Pakistan is in the memory. Uh, about 9% of Pakistan was flooded during the summer monsoon, which led to more than 1,700 casualties and more than 30 billion US dollar damages. Of all the recent extreme weather events, as Omar explains, heat will continue to dominate. Heat waves are the most evident sign of climate change because they are directly associated with increasing temperature and the increasing temperature is directly associated with increasing greenhouse gas concentration. We have noticed the increasing frequency of heat waves as well as their intensity. And this is why, for instance, we are reaching records which have been never recorded in the past, like in Europe, but also in many parts of the world, in the East Asia, in the Middle East, America, and so forth. With the current trend of CO2 emissions and the greenhouse gas concentration increasing, we can only say that the frequency, unfortunately, of heat waves is still going on. Worrying as recent extreme heat events are, the WMO also caution that the full effects of a warming climate may actually have been temporarily masked by the cooling effect of La Nina. La Nina had some small effect on not having a record warm year, but if you compare the year 2022 with previous La Nina similar years, we can see that the 2022 has been warming much more than those past years. Uh, so it's only hidden. But if you go to the ocean, we keep recording warm ocean, especially in the depth. That means that the heat in the atmosphere, which constitutes about 90% that goes to the ocean, is still increasing. So we are monitoring closely the evolution of this phenomena, and uh, we will update that uh, as soon as we get uh, a new update. My thanks to Omar Badur. So this week in the UK, Alex, Many have been basking in some sunshine. We actually saw 21 degrees across Western Scotland and UV levels are creeping up as well. And in fact, this is the first week I've talked about pollen and we've seen some very high levels of tree pollen, particularly in the West. It is that season again. Have you been sneezing? I have. I have a number of factors responsible for that. A little bit of jet lag. I also picked up a cold uh, on my time off, but I have definitely been feeling the pollen. I'm a tree pollen sufferer, so this is the time of year that I get it the worst. And yeah, levels have been rising thanks to a little bit of warmth and a little bit of sunshine. First time over 20 Celsius, uh, as you say, this this year. First time since uh, the beginning of November, I believe. And yeah, 21 in Western Scotland. So it's been Western areas that's seen the highest temperatures, and that is where tree pollen levels have been at their highest. So if you have been sneezing, that could be a reason. <coughs> mm. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, Alex, that's just, I hope someone's looking after you there. Sorry, I'm not there to give you a hot lemon and honey. Oh, that would be nice. Uh, mm. But no, I'm fine. It's just the pollen, I'm sure. Um, just anyway, <laughs> someone who knows a little bit more about that is Yolanda Clulo, and she's got the details. 
broadly speaking, the pollen season is, has three phases. So the first phase is the sort of tree season, and then we move into the grass season, and then it's the weeds. Obviously, it's not distinct, there's overlap, but primarily we start season shortly after Christmas, actually, January, February, we get the early tree species with alder and hazel coming into season. And then we move through its birch is the, is the most significant one for tree sufferers. And then oak comes into play. And then it's the grass season. There's, and there's hundreds of, of 150 odd species of grass, but we, we forecast them all together. And then later in the season, sort of July, August, September, we'll see the weeds come into season. And that's when those sufferers will see some uh, reactions. So we know, for example, we're in the birch pollen season at the moment, a type of tree. And we expect, for example, next week will be quite significant for anyone who's allergic to birch because this season is anticipated to be quite significant. You can get up to date information on all the pollen on our web and app. At the moment, our pollen forecast is one level for all the different species at the same time. But you can click on further information and it will give you a breakdown and you can ask for notifications be, to be pushed to you so you don't even have to go looking for it. Our thanks to Yolanda Klulu, Senior Account Manager for Hazards and Resilience here at the Met Office. And we do have her on every year about this time because she just knows what she's talking about. And yes, the pollen season has just started. Let's see how it pans out uh, through the next few months. So, Alex, the forecast. Yes, we've seen high pollen. We've seen a lot of sunshine, but all change. We saw the change come in Thursday evening towards the southeast. Um, and it looks like no one's going to be immune to a bit of wet weather this weekend. No, but Western Scotland will still be the place to be, I fancy, for sunshine. It's been a cracking week there, if you like spring sunshine. As already mentioned, over 20 degrees for the first time this year. It's been cooling off a touch over recent days, but still basking in sunshine on that West Coast. Uh, whereas, yeah, we have seen a change, certainly across England and Wales during Thursday and the rain pushing north into the weekend. So we'll see some into parts of southern Scotland, Northern Ireland, but I suspect the Western Isles will still be sunny and then a switch in wind direction. So this week it's been all about the easterlies, uh, not a beast, but a, a chilly breeze from the east. And now we're switching to a northerly. So it's actually going to get colder, colder air edging south during the course of the weekend so a chillier feel by the time we get into next week could be some snow showers over the mountains of scotland certainly and even at lower levels the possibility nothing too unusual about that but it, it will be a bit of a shock given the warmth that we've seen this week in western scotland to see uh, perhaps a few hail sleet and snow showers coming in so yeah turning chillier as we go into next week and then the big question mark is how long that lasts with milder air returning from the southwest through the week but question marks about how quickly that gets in. It could stay cold all week, certainly across Scotland, whereas in the southwest where I am, it should be turning uh, milder again by midweek at the latest. Plenty mm. going on this weekend, including the London Marathon, of course. Mm, difficult to say exactly what the forecast will be, but it doesn't look too warm, which is good for runners. Of course, this time of year, um, any time the sun pops out, it's, it suddenly starts to feel warm. But I suspect it will be on the coolish side with the possibility of some showers. So if you're going to going to go and watch and you should cheer on the people doing it because that's always welcome. I know I have run it in the past and the, the crowds do make a difference. Uh, make sure you've got plenty of layers on because it will be a little fresh and be prepared for a shower if you're going on Sunday. Oh, a shower on Sunday. Have you ever done the marathon? I have. Yeah. yeah. 2016, I did the mm -hmm. London Marathon once, once only. That is all I needed to. Um, what's what's the term? It's a rite of passage, S really. Isn't suffice it? that to um, satisfy mm -hmm. that urge. Mm -hmm. Satisfy yeah. that urge. Never want to do it again. Did it was train? great. I had a great time. I did train. I trained hard. I trained. Yeah, I did train. Uh, and I did it just sneaked under four hours. So I was very happy with that. I'm never going to oh. do it any better than that. So there's no point doing it again. That's really impressive. I did it um, a few years ago with my lovely friend Kate Garraway. And the training we did was we had a spray tan the day before. Of course. We made sure we had a cup of tea before we did the race. And I remember John Hammond, weatherman, running past us. And I just jumped out the way and just let all these really athletic people sprint at the beginning, which you're not meant to do, really, I'm sure. And then we just then sort of toddled around the 26.2 miles, um, got overtaken by an armadillo at one point. Oh, and nice. Probably 
lowest point was probably 19 miles. That was a real nadir for myself and Kate. N- Nazir's nadir. There's a, <laughs> yes. there's a, there's a Netflix picture uh, sequence in that, I think. <laughs> yeah, Low points for Claire Nazir. <laughs> and it was raining as well. It was, a wet, it was a wet one. So good luck to all the, the runners and uh, enjoy. So let's just finish off with you. You know, we've seen really clear skies over the last week. We've seen a bit of frost as well, but those clear skies have allowed some of us to see beautiful stars. The constellations have been out. And in fact, uh, we're now into the time of the Lyrids meteor shower. Now, I've just read, Alex, and you'll know more about this than me, that the Lyrids meteor shower actually comes from particles from a comet called Comet Thatcher, which was discovered in 1861. Did you know that? Yeah, I did probably. know that because yeah. I had done a bit of research as well, but not because of <laughs> not because of anything else. But I also googled them uh, and <laughs> found that out. No, no, uh, uh, yeah, I did raise an eyebrow about Comet Thatcher. I tried yeah. to think of a joke or two, but couldn't. Um, mm. But we're the interesting thing about that: the fact that these uh, the, the meteor shower is caused by the the debris from this comet is the comet doesn't come back for like 415 years or something. We're almost exactly halfway between the last time we saw it and the next time we saw it. So there's a good 200 years before we see it again. So we're not going to see the comet, but the debris it leaves behind, the Earth's atmosphere goes through that and it can generate uh, beautiful shooting stars. And that's what we may well see this weekend, Friday, and it peaks on Saturday. Uh, But there's a chance even beyond that into next week of seeing some shooting stars. But the peak will be Saturday night into Sunday. So yeah, wrap up. Get yourself a chair, sit out in the garden, try and get somewhere dark, really dark and get let your eyes get used to the light. And you might see some shooting stars through the uh, through the late evening uh, time. And make a wish as well, obviously, talking technically for a moment. Um, It's always good. I think it's very magical, isn't it? It really is. Talking about magic. Let's now go over to Ollie Claydon with last week's highs and lows. Here are the UK weather extremes for the week beginning 10th of April. The wettest day was Sunday the 16th of April when Derry Lynn in County Fermanagh reached 18.7 Celsius. The coldest night was also in Northern Ireland. During the early hours of Friday morning, Cates Bridge in County Town dipped to minus 4 Celsius. The wettest place last week was Acnagar, Ross and Cromarty, when on Monday 35.6 millimetres of rain fell. And finally, the sunniest place with blue skies all day was Kirkwall in Orkney, which received 13 hours of sunshine last Saturday. Our thanks to Ollie and my thanks to Alex. Always just a font of information. I mean, you've been away for two weeks. I think Aidan was away last week. He chose Scotland. I mean, did he have any insider information? Because they had an absolutely glorious week out there, didn't they? He did. He picked a good week to go to Western Scotland. It was an absolute BA. He must have known something. He must have done (laughs) the 10 day trend. Yes, I think he must have done. <laughs> Ten day trend is actually out with a trend into next week where things look a bit chilly towards the north, but that's only half the story. So take a look at that on our YouTube channel. But for now, I think it's time to say goodbye, Alex. It is, Claire. Thanks very much. Goodbye. See you soon. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.